Good evening, Solusi. This week, uh, here at Solusi University, is a week where we are focusing on our families, family life emphasis. And uh, I'm grateful to God that he, each one of us here, we belong to a family. And while we belong to a family, we also have uh, the family of God, that is the church. Are we happy to be members of our, uh, the community of believers? Can I see your hands? It says, Pastor, I'm a brother in Christ. I'm a sister in Christ. Thank you very much. Yes, the family of God blesses us, encourages us, motivates us, and prays for us, and supports us. And uh, once again, we meet here as a family of God that is represented by families where we all come from. And uh, tonight, I therefore have chosen to talk to us here as members of Solusi uh, family on uh, the four heart influencers on kids, teenagers, youth, values, and um, behavior formation. And as I look at this, my mind takes me to uh, the 1960s. The 1960s, that's a, a period where I also belong. I belong to the 1960s. Can I see those who are also uh, part of the 1960s? Can I see the hands of those who are part of the 1960s? Yeah, yeah, I can see. I do have uh, friends here. Uh, the 1960s. So I'm going to uh, take it from the 1960s. You know why I'm taking it from the 1960s? It's because from, from, uh, uh, from uh, the beginning of um, uh, the, the years, as in uh, periods, there have not been any changes. There have not been any changes even up to the 1960s. I realize that when it comes to values, you come to a point where even when you are going to be hired, the values that you have, they will determine whether you can be hired, are you employable, or you cannot get a job. When it comes to marriage, People are not looking for how you are structured. Yes, structure may also uh, uh, be important and uh, the shape of how you are. But what really matter are the values that you have. The values that you have are an added advantage, very critical. The way you carry yourself, the way, the way you conduct yourself, values matter so much. So now, when it comes to who then contributes to your values, who contributes to you, how you conduct yourself, how you carry yourself, when you look at the 1960s, this is how uh, values were, uh, were, 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 were shaped or instilled. On number one, we have the family. We have the family. When you look at Genesis chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 talks about the family, the first family, we have the family of Adam and Eve right there in Genesis chapter 2. Right there in Genesis chapter 2, you have the family of uh, Adam and Eve. Now, 
I am sharing with you on which institution was number one when it comes to values formation. Allow me to say from the first family, that is the family of Aram, up to uh, around 1960s. When you then look at the first institution that really took uh, the, the center stage, which set at position number one, it was the home. It was the family. Then the family was followed by the school. You go to 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 1 up to 19. We also have uh, the schools of the prophets. The school also uh, played a leading role when it comes to values formation. When you're talking about values, you're talking about things like respect. Respect parents is critical. Respect those that are uh, of age is very critical. Values like integrity, values like honesty, values like uh, purity, uh, values like um, uh, diligence. The family instilled those values. It was followed by the school. Then, remember we as human beings, we don't only belong to a family, neither do we also belong to a school, but we do have uh, friends and the peers. Friends took the position of number three. Friends took the position of number three. I remember when we were growing up, we had friends. And these friends also had a hand in instilling values, in impressing values. They also, the way they spoke to you and the way you also spoke to them, uh, like you, you were taught to be polite. And this young man uh, or this young lady who happened to be a, a friend will also, uh, as he greets or as she greets you, politely she will do it. And that's one of the values. And the peers of friends took the position of number three. Then the church set on number four. So the four institutions worked hand in hand from 1960s when we were born. That's how they worked together. It is interesting to note that he, these four spoke with one voice. You were taught at home to respect. You go to school, you are taught again respect. You also go around, you are playing with your friends, you also uh, embrace respect. You also come to church, you meet church elders, you meet pastors, you meet superintendents, you meet church members. They also teach, teach you the same thing, respect. So they spoke with one voice. That was in the 1960s. And uh, my professor, as he sits here, uh, you can see a level-headed man and the values that were put in him. Now, 20 years later, it is interesting to note, 20 years later, that is in 1980s, let me see those who were born in 1980s. I'm coming closer now. 1980s. Yeah, 1980s. Are you here? Right. 1980s. The story is changing now. 20 years later, that is 1960s to 1980s, that is 20 years later, the story is changing. The dynamic has changed now. So I just want you to see that there has been a shift over time. 20 years later, there is a shift now. Now, as you look at these four institutions that worked together and they spoke with one voice, the family uh, uh, in number one, the school in number two, friends and the peers on number three, the church on number four, but speaking with one voice. 20 years later, you then have uh, um, 
the following uh, changes now. At number one, it is interesting to note that uh, friends or peers took position number one. So those who were born in 1980s, we as parents, we are no longer involved in your values formation or in your way of caring yourself. You are now taught by friends. Very unfortunately, that you are taught by a friend. Your, your dad or your mom is no longer in the picture. Number two, we still thank God that the 1980s, I, they are blessed because the family is still there. Mr. Mkandla, hallelujah. I saw you raising your hand. Your dad and your mom is there. Sitting on position number two, when it comes to values, values are very critical. Without values, you don't have a human being. Without values, we do not, you do not have a, a, any human being, really, who still, we can say, this person is still in the image of God. You are something else without values. Hence, values are very critical. And as your pastor, I want to challenge Solus University Church as a church as we have heard. You have a responsibility to teach our young people values. Parents that are here, I want to challenge you. You have a responsibility to teach these young people that are here. Teachers, you have heard the school must play a leading role in promoting values and instilling values. Friends, you are also here. You have a role to teach each other values. But now, what is critical? It depends what type of friends. What type of friends? If you have wrong friends, you'll have wrong values. If you have right friends, you'll have right values. Now we are in 1980s. Friends are on number one. They are the ones now that have taken position number one. It is, they are followed by the family. We thank God the family is still around sitting on position two. But we must be concerned that the family has been moved from position number one. And now values now are taught by friends. Uh, on position number one, the family is just coming in uh, uh, as a supplementary entity, but sitting on position number two. Ah, you'll be shocked. On position number three, a monster comes into the picture. A monster comes into the picture. That is media. This is 1980s. Media comes into the picture. It is now also involved in teaching values. Media. WhatsApp is now teaching values. Facebook is now teaching values. Can we trust WhatsApp? to instill values? Can we, can we trust Facebook to instill values? Can we trust Twitter to instill values? Ah! Media is on position number two. Number three. It has come in from no way. No way. It has come in sitting on position three. And uh, if it is sitting on position three, it must worry you, it must be of concern to you that now what then has happened to an institution that was on position number three. If media has come in, and uh, the institution originally, according to God's plan, that was sitting on position number four, what has happened to it? If this monster has come in, media comes in, is sitting on position number three, that is 1980s. Number four now, the school has been pushed to number four. The church is now sitting on position number five. So if you are a pastor, 
you must be concerned. There is no job for you as of 1980s because you are now on number five. You have no voice. No one trusts you. No one really takes you serious. You have been pushed to number five. Church elders, if you are here, you have been pushed to number five. Teachers, if you are here, you have been pushed to number four. You must be concerned. Media has come in from nowhere, sitting on position number three. Ten years later, that is 1990s, the rest of our members here at Solus University, Solus University or the Seventh-day Adventist Church is young. And the Solus University Church is also young because it is part of the global church. 1990s, can I see your hands? 1990s, can I see your hands? The 1990s. 1990s, can I see your hands? Yes, thank you very much. I know you are a majority. 1990s. Here is the, the list now in 1990s. 1990s up to present. I did this um, a research um, sometime when I was just um, doing my master's uh, at one of the universities uh, by the name Stellenbosch. Now listen to this. 1990s up to present, media is on position number one. 1990s, media jumps from position number three, it jumps number two, it goes to the top, 1990s. So those who were born in 1990s, the master teacher, the leading teacher, the parent, the pastor, is media. Media is in charge. Media is in control. Media is leading uh, the list, 1990s up to present. Then number two, we have peers or friends. Very unfortunate. That media has taken position number one. Then friends come in also because friends are also tapping from the media and there is both the media and the friends that are involved in teaching this critical component of human beings called values. Human beings now are formed by media. Human beings now are, are shaped by media. Prospective husbands that are here are shaped by media. Prospective wives that are here are shaped by media. Prospective uh, uh, parents that are here are shaped by media. What kind of a world are we going to have? What kind of a society are we going to have? What kind of uh, uh, communities are we going to have? What kind of families are we going to produce? Media has taken over. This is the reason why, and I, I'm proposing something here, why some of us here on our Solusi streets here, you meet an elderly person of my age, you just pass, you don't greet. The reason is there are no values. Yes, you have an A in science of origins, but there are no values in you. Yes, you have an A in Greek, but there are no values in you. Yes, you have an A in a course either in finance or in accounting, but there are no values in you. Yes, you may be in grade seven, uh, uh, you are doing well, you are one of the leaders there, you are elected, doing well, but there are no values in you. You are at SARS, but there are no values in you. Even us, as parents, we also meet each other. We are not greeting each other here. A clear indication, there are no values. Values have disappeared. Values have disappeared. I want to challenge each one of us here. As Solus University, remember, 
we are producing pastors here. Remember, we are producing accountants here. Remember, we are producing parents here, prospective parents here. We are producing pro prospective husbands, prospective wives, prospective mothers and the fathers. I want to challenge you during this week. We need values back. Values must be restored. We must respect each other. Must respect each other. If you have a point, you are talking to an elderly person, speak politely. Don't shout to me, I'm not of your age. And I will never be of your age. I've seen it all. You have just seen two things. I've heard it all. You have just heard about what's up. But I've heard about Adam. You have no experience. I have an experience. Check my hair and check yours. Check my hair and check yours. Mine are blessed. Yours, there is no blessing. Because gray hair is wisdom. So there is no wisdom in you, only foolishness. Respect me. I'm not of your age. I'm your father. I'm your father. I'm your father. I'm your father. Take note of that. Talk nicely to elderly people. You will have a blessing. Commandment number Six, five, honor your mom and your dad. And the word honor your mom and your dad does not mean your biological dad. Anyone of your daddy's age, honor, and your days shall be longer on this planet. Honor. Honor your parents. Some of us, we don't even know where our parents are. In the name of, I, I'm doing a degree at Solus University, but you don't know where your mom is. You, 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 you sleep without talking to your mom. Very dangerous. Very deadly. But you want to talk to a friend, but you can't talk to your mom. You can't talk to your, your, your dad but you want to talk, you, you, you are busy on, on WhatsApp. In fact, even your profile, when, you, when we check on your, your, your picture profile, it's not your dad. It's someone else. <laughs> check my profile. Check mine. you see my mom. Young people, I have a son. I talk to him. I say, your first your first girlfriend is your mother. I'm not apologetic. To my girl, your boyfriend is me. Your boyfriend is me. Even as you look for someone to marry, I am the model. I am the model. You, young men, as you look for someone to marry, your mom is the model. Don't undermine your mother. Don't undermine your father and the respect of Ronato. But you can't respect your mother. Respect your mother. Respect your father. Media, very dangerous. In fact, I, am, I, I want to submit and say maybe the family today and the school today and the church today, these institutions have let us down. They have let their doors wide open and allowed media to take over. You walk in into a family, the father is seated by the corner there on a WhatsApp, the mother by the corner there on a WhatsApp, children also on a WhatsApp. There is no one talking to each other. We are all put on a gadget. Very dangerous. What kind of a family is that? What kind of a family? That's an artificial family. That's a dangerous family. 
I want to appeal to Solusi Church. I want to appeal to the families that are here. I want to appeal to all of us. Let the family come back. Let the family come back. In fact, in Malachi 4, verse 5, the Bible says, I will send Elijah. Hearts has been stolen. That is according to Malachi. Hearts have been stolen. Hearts that are sitting here looking at me have been stolen by media. Hearts have been stolen. Hearts before Jesus comes back again. Jesus comes back again. Hearts must be turned to each other. My heart to my children and my children's hearts to me. My heart to my mom and my mom's heart to me. My heart to my father and my father's heart to me. Your heart to your mother and your mother's heart to you. Hearts must come back. Hearts must come back. As you sit here, where is your heart? It is with a boyfriend. A heart in the hands of a boyfriend. Huh? A heart in the hands of a boyfriend. A heart in the hands of a girlfriend. Hearts are all over. They are taken by a young man in Makokoba. After three weeks, another young man from Seke takes over. After three months, it goes to Pindura. After four, a, a month later, it goes to Soweto. From Soweto, it goes to Uganda. And to make matters worse, these hearts are exchanged through Facebook. Very unfortunate. Oh, Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Number three, the family takes position number three. This is 1990s. Imagine, look at where the family is. Elders, are you here? Are you listening to me? Please, I'm appealing to you as your pastor. Bring the family to number one. Pastors, are you here? Bring the family to number one. Parents, are you here? You have an obligation to bring the family here. How do you bring the family here back to number one? Please let us model family. It becomes unfortunate to these young people that look to us as models that we do silly things, mischievous things as elderly people where also our hearts as married people are stolen. My heart is stolen by another woman but I'm married. Hey. Hey. My heart given to this woman that I don't know. Hey. Hey. What are we teaching our young people? What are we teaching our young people? What are we teaching them? We, 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 we are discouraging them to a point where they come to a point that they will say, no, this doesn't work. Divorce rate. You check on divorce rate. It is high there. Now, what do we expect our young people that look to us? I want to challenge all of us tonight. We who are married. Please. Be honest to each other. Be faithful to each other. In sickness and in health, be together. In poverty and in prosperity, be together. In health and in crisis, be together. Till death do you apart. Let's model. Let's model. Let's model. Let's model. Number four. In 1990s to present, the school sits on position number four. 1990s to present, the church is missing. The church is missing. I was checking uh, on what is happening in the Western world. Buildings like Solusi University Church, 
they've been turned into pubs. There is no church. Check immediately after my presentation. Buildings like Solusi University Church that were dedicated to God, they've been turned to pubs. 1990s to 19 to present, the church is non-existing. When we talk about the church, we're not talking about the building, we're talking about people. Check. People are not interested to spiritual things. People have no appetite for spiritual things. Even in our own homes, our own children have no appetite to spiritual things. They have appetite to Facebook. There is no church. Look at the benches. Empty. There is no church. No appetite to spiritual things. People have appetite to things that don't matter. Alas, pastors, elders, members of the church, we have a mountain. We have a mountain. We need to bring back the church. Let's make the church relevant in our generation. Let's make a noise, a lot of noise. Let's proclaim that Jesus is coming again. And as we proclaim that Jesus is coming again, let us do it through our families. Maybe the reason why people have no interest in church is because we have made the church irrelevant. We have made the church irrelevant. We have made our family worship irrelevant. When young people come to church here and they are singing, last supper I was uh, with young people, we, 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 we want young people to behave like us. We want young people to sing like us. No, young people must sing like young people. Young people must dress like young people. Young people must dress like young people. Young people must present themselves like young people. There is no need for us as a church to frustrate our young people. Our young people are young people. That's why we are saying they are young people. Let's accommodate them. Let's not frustrate them. Even in our homes, let's not frustrate them. Let's give them the, 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 a platform to make a decision. Let's give them a platform to make a choice. Let's give them a platform to contribute. Even in the church, let's make our young people own the church. Let's have them even in key position. Let's elect them. Let's trust them. Let's have faith in our young people. Jesus was young when he joined the ministry. Ellen White had a serious hand in this church at 17 years. Elderly people had ran away. Young people are very fresh. Me, I'm finished. You can just look at, check for yourself and I'm finished. The sun has set. But these young people are very fresh. They can do wonders if rightly trained, rightly positioned. And that's why we are saying to them, they also need values as they lead, as they serve Jehovah. With these words, I want to conclude by saying, it is interesting to note that in 1960s, the four entities spoke with one voice. In 1980s, 20 years later, there was a mixed, there were some mixed voices, conflicting voices we have already seen when the media came in with funny things. Media is good, but media must be controlled when we use it. Let's use it within the parameters of our God guiding us and helping us. Let us not just uh, use it randomly. It is very destructive. But when it is used well, it is very constructive. In fact, it's media that we are using even to proclaim the everlasting gospel. But media must be uh, controlled. We even need to pray for those that are in charge of media. So that as they plan programs, 
They plan programs that are healthy, that are spiritually healthy, that are socially healthy, that our eyes can look at them and we have no problem. So we need to pray for those who are in charge of media, who are in charge of all various modes of media. Let's pray for them as a church. In 1990s, as I've already said, the entities were divided now. And uh, as they were divided now, obvious, the values that come in now are not good values. But there is hope in Malachi chapter 6. God says, I will send Elijah. Elijah's message is the message that I'm sharing tonight. Hearts are going to come back. Hearts that have been stolen by Balism. Because when Elijah was called by God, Israel's hearts had been stolen by Balism. They had given their hearts to Baal. They had forsaken God. They had apostatized. And I may assume that according to the book of Malachi, as the Old Testament is closing, God now is speaking to his last day family, that is the remnant church, Amasala. God is saying, what happened to ancient Israel when hearts were stolen by Balism? Hearts again, as we approach the end of time, hearts have been stolen. Let's have them back. Let's have them back. God is asking for your heart. Anyone who says, Pastor, I need a special prayer. For my family, I need a special prayer. If you are here, can I see your hand? Why don't you stand? Pastor, I want to surrender my heart to God. I want my heart to be controlled by objects. Hearts that have been stolen by materialism. Hearts that have been stolen by idolism. Hearts that have been stolen by uh, all negative isms. Pastor, I just want my heart to be in the hand of Jehovah. I'm praying with you. Our Father, you have ministered to us. We thank you so much, Father, for hearing our prayer as we are on our feet. We are turning back to you. As families, individual members of families, as young people, as parents, as elderly people, oh God, make things right with us. We just want to see you when you shall come again. Bless our bigger family, that is Sonusi family. Bless the families that are represented here. The various issues, various concerns, various problems speak to our situations and they make things right in our families. Our student body are writing. We are praying for them. Please, God, they are members of our family. We are excited and we are happy when we see them progress to another level. And among them, there are those, God, who are finishing. We pray, God, that it may be well. Even those who are still here, God, we pray that as they continue to embark on their exams, give them the strength to handle these academic uh, issues. And above all, as we are on our feet, we are saying, when you shall come again, as we have heard, we are saying, make us ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you.